I decided I'm going to do one more. I mean, I mean, if they're all this, if they're all this, they're they're so articulate and so important. I I want to get these testimonies. Um, Ella, um, Ella, I, Ellie, I can't pronounce your last name. So if you would um, pronounce your last name for me, please. Um, yeah, my name is Ellie, and I don't know if that's... That's... Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Welcome. I like the, I like this format they have here. Thank you. I'm going to be able to support again. I apologize for turning back on noise. Um, I'm here once again to talk about my concerns about, um, trying to make their increased proposal. Mm -hmm. Um, the reason I'm attending virtually today is because I'm actually calling in from Washington, D.C. and I'm here for the National Trans and Justice Advocacy Convening. And yeah, over the past three days, I've really been in community and solidarity with transit riders and organizers from over 20 states and 75 organizations around the country. Um, I'm also, you know, in a city, in a place that has a metro area that is significantly larger than Portland, and yet has recently made the commitment to have all public transit be completely fearless. Um, this morning, I sat next to a person from Washington State who worked on the campaign to make youth there, so 18 and under, on public transit completely free for the entire state of Washington. Yesterday, I met with two different organizers from Pittsburgh who successfully got a fearless pilot program implemented for the entire metro area. And I also had the opportunity to meet with Congress representatives um, and staff members, including with a staff member from Representative Blumenauer's office. And I was able to hear commitments from those representatives to continue pressuring um, the federal government to allocate more funding for transit operations um, and to center equitable transit at the forefront of all of our climate, racial, and economic justice efforts as a country. And I really am saying all this to demonstrate that this country, I think, is finally hearing from those of us who are in the trenches, so communities of color, low-income communities, youth and seniors, those with disabilities, um, are finally being heard and seen in the lived experiences that we have with using transit. Um, and just like hearing our constant struggle with getting to work and home again every day and visiting family and just all of the energy it takes to move around our cities. And it's just really putting into perspective to me that I think it's shameful that while much of this country is hearing this call to Portland, Oregon, a city that has often been a beacon of progress, is choosing to actively regress by considering a fare increase that would undoubtedly decrease ridership and make transit less accessible in this town. So I'm just here today urging the board to seriously consider the message that Trumpet wants to send not only to this community, but to the rest of the country. We have this opportunity to be at the forefront of progress and to demonstrate once and for all that Portland um, aligns itself with the well-being of everyday taxpayers of this community. Um, and we just need to move away from fair revenue reliance um, as a core fiscal strategy to just get more creative to figuring out how to unlock um, more state funding opportunities. So I you know I'm not time, but yeah, just strongly urging this board to take a hard look at what this proposal actually means to this community and ultimately come to the conclusion that it's not in our best interest and vote no um, on this proposal in May. Um, thank you so much. Okay. Thank you, Ellie. Appreciate your comments. Our last. Oh, wait. Well, let me cut this off.